Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppets. And I'm really stoked right now because I'm getting to try a beer I've been wanting to try for so long. So we're back on drinking American, not haze, clear beer. Um, I was, you know, I've been out of trying to get beer home from the States for quite a while, uh, taking a break from it because it's so expensive. But then recently, the stars aligned, and two of the IPAs I wanted to try the most from newer breweries happen to be packaged and released around the same time. So it's this beer, none other than North Park Inset Foo, Spin on Hot Foo, and also Nose Goblin from Ghost Town. So it's like, oh my God. So we ended up getting a package where we got some North Park, some Ghost Town, and also some Shred. I'm so stoked to finally try some Shred. I've been following along Sack's journey at Slice for a long time, and uh, the stuff he did at Slice was just marvelous. Some of the best West Coast IPAs around. Man, I still dream of heavy cabbage, and and uh, it was the best friends forever kind of beer. What was it called? Best Buds? Like He made some really crazy good beers. I'm looking forward to tr be trying some Shred. So yeah, we got some awesome fresh beers. All of them are around 21, 24 days old right now. So I'm going to be drinking a can every day the next few days. <laughs> I, I need to drink these or maybe two cans every day. I just need to drink these really freaking fresh. Uh, hopefully I can try to share some. Uh, but main priority is drinking these when they're still this fresh. Because it's so rare you get to try American beer at this age. Like not even four weeks. So I am stoked. So as I said, the first beer we're trying here is from one of my favorite breweries, North Park, when it comes to hop. Again, hops. Again, like the West Coast, man. Like I, I love West Coast hoppy brewers. Oh, beer. Hoppy brewers. Breweries of hoppy beer. And I can smell this right here. It smells great. So Enset Fu. Uh, hop Fu is the beer that it's based off. It's a riff on. And it's, I think the Joe said the most awarded homebrew in uh, in. Uh, like the San Diego area and SoCal. And it's a, one of the best like flagship West Coast IPAs out there, I think. Also a massive shout out to Joe because Joe is the man helping orchestrate this and getting all this stuff fresh over. So thanks a ton, Joe. If you don't know Joe from Jarvis Arcade, I mean, you need to check out his channel. I will put a link down below. So Inset Fu, I'm so freaking stoked about this. <laughs> It's a triple dry hop West Coast IPA and it's loaded to the brim with New Zealand hops. 7.4% uh, alcohol. And this is also a good beer because it won some award from awards from competitions that really have merit, like the best beer competitions. It won gold and World Beer Cup in 23 in International IPA and won gold at the American Beer Fest in 22 for English IPA or New Zealand IPA. So what's interesting, it says New Zealand IPA online on Untapped and stuff, but on the can it also says Triple Dry West Coast IPA. So I think it's a bit of merge of traditions and whatnot because also... Hop, it's like almost, I think it's a New Zealand ish version of Hop Foo because Hop Foo is also more bitter than Inset Foo. This is around 30 some IBU, and I think Hop Foo is 70. But uh, yeah, what's also interesting is that here there's so much info on the can now. So I wonder if it's because they shrink, have to shrink down stuff or not wanting to shrink down text too much because it says Triple Dry Hope with Nelson Sylvain, Peacherine, and Nectron. But if you read on their Facebook post, it says other things from the most recent release 7.4% on their Facebook post, and I think this is the reason why, because listen to this. Uh, Triple Dry Hop was Freestyle Southern Cross, Nelson CGX, Mosaic Cryo, Freestyle Nelson, Nectron, Mosaic, and Freestyle Peacherine. And I think at one point it was also Nelson Cryo. So like, I'm guessing they're, okay, they couldn't get Nelson Cryo, so they used Nelson CGX or something like that. It seems like they're, that might be the deal, but Southern Cross was in there originally, but the big thing is, I think, uh, Nelson and Peacherine and, uh, and Nectron being the big predominant players in the beer, because I think, I mean, they say those uh, Nelson, Picturine, and Extron on the side of the can, and it's also what I remember when I saw this beer, like, oh, Picturine? I never heard of that hop. I got to brew with it myself now. It's an amazing hop. Um, but they say it tastes like watermelon, strawberry, blueberry, tangerine, and fruit stripe gum. Let's drink and set food, because this intro is way too long. Pour is a golden yellow color in the glass, green issue, signifying heavy hop additions, slightly hazy because of heavy hop additions, I'm sure. Not a lot of CO2. The head fist away like really quick. I'm not seeing like streaming CO2 levels of this one. White head. I can smell the beer already, so I am stoked to drink some dead fresh and set food. Let's check out the aroma first. 
Smells like best coast. <laughs> oh, this smells really nice. Oh, I'm getting loads of Nelson. I'm getting gooseberry. I'm getting like cushy, weedy dankness. Blueberry kush. That must be the mosaic. But there's like passion fruit, like pineapple, really bright tropical fruit notes. And then the big thing is like, I think a lot of people when they get this, they're traveling around West Coast and they're, they're thinking haze. But one of the big things and the reasons why hazy beers are so saturated with flavors, you've got a canvas or a, a helping hand from yeast and yeast character. And then there's also this thing with yeast and haze and polyphenols, everything being in suspension. Like you still have a little bit of hot particles and whatnot in suspension. So you get like this slightly more saturated nuance, I think in a triple dry hopped a hazy and a triple dry hot westy. It, but it smells freaking phenomenal. I'm definitely getting pe getting peacherine now. Like this peachy stone fruity kind of nuance, really like ripe stone fruit, but there's also like a candied profile to it. Like uh, they said, I can see like fruit kind of gum type notes, maybe like um, some kind of tropical fruit gum. I don't know about watermelon. But it's like really like almost like bright tropical candies, gummy candies. It's like that candy hop flavor we sometimes talk about and Joe also likes to talk about. I totally get that. It smells fucking heavenly. It smells like great clear beer. Let's drink some inside food. Cheers. Thanks a ton for the help, Joe. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I gotta be 100% honest. I was slightly let down by the flavor of oh, the aroma. Like, well, oh, this is nice. But fuck me, that flavor. Oh, it's so drying. Like, it's bone dry, but loads of sweet fruitiness at the same time. And you can definitely sense that it's not as bitter as uh, hop foo. Fuck, it's almost got like sweat. <laughs> it's almost got like a little bit of a sweaty gym suck dankness. I, or, like, I don't know, sweaty gym song. I, I don't know if you ever smell weed that sl smells slightly sweaty. You can get that sometimes with hops, I think. There's almost like this sweaty, dank, weedy aroma to it, or flavor to it, which is weird, but really nice. Fuck, I can't remember the last time I had a West Coast IPA that was on this territory. <laughs> this is so good. This is like, oh. I'm gonna savor every single drop of this. I wish I could have shared this with just Michael, but I couldn't because I had to drink this right now. And if you notice, I'm like just swirling around on the chair with excitement. I wanna triple dry hop my whiskeys now. Like, fuck man. This is the kind of hoppy beer I wanna drink. It's really clean. It's got like no yeast bite or like weird biting, uh, like chalky feel or anything. It's just like crisp, clean, and massively hoppy. I think it could do with more bitterness, but it's so dry and hop saturated that you maybe not really need it or don't really need it. Fuck, this is dope. So much Nelson, like so much gooseberry and like kind of white grape characteristics to it. To this, but paired with this really bright hop candy, almost like the ye the uh, not yellow, the white Haribo gummy bears, gummy bears. I'm getting a little bit of that. It's got a slight kind of bitter herby thing on the back, but it's like it's a very clean bitterness. I found brewing these when you get to get that clean bitterness with like really bright hop flavor, the, like the magic, the key you need is the the cold whirlpool. You'll be surprised by how much uh, like drying, earthy, kind of hop mattery flavor you get by not doing cold whirlpools. I'm, I'm pretty surprised because usually I've been like, I've been so debating, but if you're looking at this like saturated hop brightness, I feel like the cold whirlpool, at least in my experience, is a must. They might be doing something else if they use like, well, they didn't say anything about extracts, but you, I guess you could get a similar thing with hop extracts. I fucking understand why this won an award at the World Beer Cup and the Great American Beer Fest because, and, and gold. This is, like if you categorize this as a New Zealand IPA, this is the best New Zealand IPA I've ever had. Um, 
and so much of that layered tropical flavor. And again, like there is definitely peach ring qualities, which is, I think is really peachy. It's almost like a little bit like peach ring candies or uh, Haribo apricots, or is it peaches? I keep getting confused by that. I think it is peaches, but there's a little bit of that in there too. Like this gummy candy peach character and gummy candy Haribo, like white gummy bears. And then like really bright tropical, like pineapple, slightly cushy, blueberry cushy, and then like sweaty gym sock cushy dankness. It's, it's so fucking tasty and it's so bone dry that you can't help but just chug it. This is almost 7.5%. Like it's almost, it could almost be a dull IPA and drinks like five and you just want to chug it because it's got so much flavor and drinkability. Like the drinkability in this is insane. And this is not super cold. That's also one of the things. Treat these like your hazies. I would never drink a hazy IPA ice cold. The Westie, yeah, they can be really refreshing ice cold, but you lose flavor. Take it out 20 minutes out of the fridge and then crack it. And that's my preferred way to do it these days with the hazies, unless they're triples usually, or Westies, as well as hazies. This is a crusher. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't mind if this was more bitter, but I also don't mind that it's not more bitter. Like this could be the gateway to get people to drink clear beer and drink Westies because it's just like, the layers of fucking flavor on this is insanity. Grade 95? Like 95 is what I gave Hot Foo. And I'm debating a 96. I'm debating a 96. But I think we're, we're going to stick to the 95. There's like... This is really the kind of IPAs I want to brew these days and drink. So much shit going on in this. Yeah, 95, 96, this review is way too long. So if you guys had a chance to try North Park Beer Co's Inset Foo, let me know what you thought of it. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. World class, even West Coast IPA. I fucking love this. And I'm so stoked I finally got to try it. So if you guys had this, let me know what you thought of it. As always, comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, Twitter, and Instagram, and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future. Notifications about videos and check out Joe's channel. Link for his down below. And I'm going to say cheers and see you guys in another beer review.